Okay, hey YouTube, it's me, Dina Diva82, back again. Tonight I'm gonna be making some black bottom cheesecake filled cupcakes. I actually got this recipe off of YouTube from The Joy of Baking, and I have all this leftover cream cheese from the holidays when I was making a lot of cheesecakes, a lot of cheese balls, and I really, I mean, I love cheesecake, but I don't want it, I mean, I love cream cheese. But I don't want it to go to waste because I have so much of it. And then it is really fattening, so I'm trying to cut back. Even though I buy the, I think it's pronounced Nofatella cream cheese. You can't tell the difference between that and the full fat cream cheese. I make all my cheesecakes out of that and the fat free sour cream. And nobody ever knows that it's not the full fat cream cheese and sour cream. So um, let's get started. We're going to start off by sifting the dry ingredients. We have one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. One cup of white sugar. One third cup of, I think this is unsweetened cocoa. Mine doesn't say unsweetened cocoa, but it doesn't say sweetened either. It's the Nestle Toll House cocoa. One tablespoon of baking soda and one fourth teaspoon of salt so we have all that in here and we're just gonna you know sift it in here you don't have the recipe didn't call for sifting but I always sift my ingredients because it's just it, it makes the cupcakes or cakes always a little lighter a little fluffier I mean, it just comes out really good, and it also gets it combined really well when you're doing these dry ingredients. So, and just get those little nubs out, because with the cocoa, you always have these little hard bits in here. That's another good reason to sift. And we're just gonna set that to the side, and in another bowl, we're gonna combine all our liquid ingredients. One third cup of vegetable oil any light colored oil that doesn't have a flavor in it you can use one tablespoon of white vinegar and a little about one teaspoon of vanilla extract I tend to like a lot of vanilla in my baking so I always kind of dab a little bit more it's not a full tablespoon but it's a little bit more than um, a teaspoon but not much more so I mean if you wanted to just do a teaspoon you really wouldn't be doing anything bad so just get that combined really quickly and also one cup of water so just mix that up you know fairly good I mean it's oil and vinegar it's only going to mix with so well so with your dry ingredients, just bring them back over here. And I always take a little whisk and whisk everything together. It puts more air back into the flour and just gets everything really done. So I'm gonna make a little well here in the center. And you can even feel how light the flour feels after you sift it. And I'm just gonna dump in get this oil up off the bottom of my pan. dump in all of the liquid ingredients and you start you make the well so that as you you know stir it little a little bit more flour comes into the mixture and it's not going all over the place and it combines really nice I mean you could do this with a, a hand mixer or even a stand mixer but one, I don't have a stand mixer. And two, I don't feel like making a lot of noise with the hand mixer because if you guys didn't know, it's about 2 o'clock in my house. <laughs> but I really can't sleep, and this is really the best time for me to do stuff when my whole house is quiet, the baby's sleeping. So everything is combined, a nice, thin, gooey batter. Okay, now for our cream cheese filling, we're going to... Beat together one package of eight ounce cream cheese and see this is the kind I'm talking about the Nufatella cheese is one-third less fat than the 
regular full fat cream cheese and you can't tell the difference. I think Philly cream cheese does make like a fat free cream cheese that is nasty because I've had like a diet cream cheese and I could tell that it was diet but this one you cannot tell at all. I mean it's so nice and thick and creamy and this is at room temperature. I've had it sitting out now to get it nice and soft. So, I'm going to do one, um, one package of cream cheese, one third cup of sugar, and again, you could use your mixer, and with this one I probably should have because it's a cream cheese, but I really don't feel like pulling out the mixer. I may end up having to, let me see how this works okay I didn't have to pull the mixer out I just went off camera for a second so I could really get into it now we're gonna do one egg and I know you're not supposed to crack your eggs over your stuff but I am today one egg and again it's supposed to be a half a teaspoon of vanilla um, I'm using a little bit more than that. You can definitely use the regular half a teaspoon. So that's just going to change the color of my cream cheese mixture and make it a little bit darker. But that's okay with me because I happen to just really like the flavor of vanilla. Especially in my bacon. And now that it's a little thinner, I can bring my whisk back out to make sure that I get all the lumps out of it. And it's nice and smooth. There we go. And sip it on my hot cocoa. I should have made a video on this. This hot cocoa came out like super good. I used sweetened condensed milk instead of regular milk. And I didn't have to add any sugar or anything. It was really good. So I already have a cupcake lined pan. It is a dark pan. I can't find my normal cupcake pan. So I think when you use a dark pan, you have to cook them at a lower temperature for less time I'm not sure I'm gonna adjust the temperature you're supposed to cook this at 350 degrees for 25 minutes but with my pan being so dark I don't really know so I'm just gonna start spooning in cupcake mix about halfway up and now you're just gonna take your cream cheese filling and spoon it in to the center of each one. I'm going to do something a little different with a couple of them just because I'm curious to see how it's going to come out. And I have a little bit of filling. Oops. I have a little bit of filling left over. I think I'm going to stick this in the freezer because I could actually do something with this. Not part of the recipe. And that's why I said I'm only going to do it in a couple of them. I'm going to take a toothpick and swirl that around and see how that works when they bake up. It should bake up fine and do like a marble effect, but I don't know because it's not dough. I mean, it's not, you know, two kinds of cake mix like how you would normally see it. It is cream cheese. So I'm only going to do it. Uh, I'll do it on one more. And that's about it. And now I'm going to take it to the oven and I'm going to start it off um, at 350, which is the recommended time. Actually, no, I'm going to start it off at 325 um, for 20, 25 minutes. Okay, you guys, so the rule about if you're baking with a darker pan, 
So that rule with the darker pan is turn the temperature down because I bake this and you see how dark my um my baking pan is. So I, the recipe originally called for 25 minutes at 350 degrees. Because I used a dark pan, I baked it at 25 minutes at 325 degrees. And it came out really good. The cheesecake needs to be set so it's kind of firm. And of course, take any toothpick and find your thickest cupcake and go through the center of that. And it should come out nice and clean. So some of them did puff up a little bit more than others. Um, this one is, of course, the most perfect one of all. That I put the just enough amount of filling in there so it didn't puff up too, too much. But um, I think this recipe really would either, if the cup, if my cupcake pan was a little bit bigger, it probably would do 12 good or... I would say maybe 17 or 18 cupcakes in the same type of pan. So next time I will do what I started to and, and kind of fill them up halfway and just use another pan. So I'm going to pop these out and let them cool on a wire rack and bite into them. Okay, you guys. So here they go uh, straight out of the pan on a wire rack cooling in a few minutes uh well once they're cool i'll actually stick them in the refrigerator to let them really cool down because they have the cream cheese and the egg in it you don't want to leave these out now i am going to taste one while it's nice and warm and delicious and see how it comes out and i love using these little cake pans and I, I mean these little cupcake holders and swirling them in some of them they really did put the cheesecake all the way through so I like that I'm just gonna take a little bite and look it came out so nice and fluffy you can feel how moist it is it springs right back mm -mm -mm. that is a good cupcake this is a really good chocolate cupcake recipe too if you wanted to just do the plain chocolate cake recipe and top it with some kind of frosting oh that would be delicious this i have never met seen a chocolate recipe that was that simple and so delicious and look how how soft and fluffy it is This is definitely going to be a go-to recipe of mine. Oh, oh my God, I'm going to have to stop eating before I eat this whole pan of them. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Rate, subscribe. Bye.